Hey everybody, it's Kate Quinn from Fabricated Quilts. And we're back with another episode of our Free Motion Fridays. So I'll get a little housekeeping stuff right out of the way. Last week I did um, circles and I did three different designs in a circle. And that video, I don't know what happened to it, but it is unviewable. So I was going to go ahead and turn that into a sequence. And what I'll probably end up doing is redoing that first section and then restarting that section at a later time. So I have um, a quilt that I have finished and this is my gonna be my live ruler work full day or two day session in the future for this 2022. So as I'm finishing up the sample, I wanna put some more decorative quilting on it and put some you know, different texturing, detail quilting. So what I thought I would do for our Free Motion Fridays today is just start working with a couple of the sections and we'll continue developing the sections on here until we're finished with the quilting. So I have a couple of them today. We'll probably just do two or three sections at a time. And this is just basic white fabric. I don't think it's batik. It's just some kind of a whole cloth white the batting is also white. If you're using white fabric predominantly, I really encourage you to use white batting, not yellow. Because yellow or natural colored batting under white will definitely make this look very dingy. So white is definitely preferred if you have a predominantly white uh, quilt. So the thread that I quilted this with, it looks pretty dark for some reason, but it's it's not. It's actually this. It's kind of this minty type of thing. The green shows up a little bit stronger when the green um, shows up, or if you double stitch with two colors, that's when you tend to get a little bit more. So here's that definition kind of in the shadow of this color. This is Fantastico, which is variegated, and it's 40 weight polyester. This is 5148. So it's kind of like a minty, you know those mint candies used to get the little square ones that are yellow, pink, pastel green. It's kind of like that with maybe just a little bit of a deeper color in there. So this is what I used to quilt all of this. And this was all entirely ruler work for this part. There's no free motion right now on here. What I've got in my machine right now is I have a 100 weight silk thread. So this thread, it's very, very fine. I'm just going to pull up a little bit of it. Woo, super fine. And in the bobbin, I have 80 weight deco bob. Why am I using such a fine thread? This has not very large spaces. These spaces are kind of small. And if I put a really fat thread in there and I want to go over something one, two, maybe three times, that thread really will build up and potentially be unsightly. So at this point for the micro fills, I don't have a variegated thread. I have a really faint pink because what I want is the pink will just offer a little different color than the white. So for example, if I do a fill and an open space and a fill and an open space, that pink, it'll be very subtle, but it will create a visual texture difference and a visual color difference. So that was my thought. So today the areas that I wanna work on are filling in these triangles and on this side. So let me just talk about how I created this too, because this might be a fun way to split up your space. So this space right here is 12, right here. This is a 12 inch space. So when I was marking this off, this part right here is an echo on the inside, but in order to just make these triangles like that, right now I just split this into thirds. So if I set my ruler, this is zero, three, six, nine, and 12. Then just to make this perfectly even and make it match, I took the one and a half, because I know that this divides evenly into three sections, so I started here with the ruler at one and a half, and then I marked three, six, nine, and 12. So basically I just took off a little bit and shifted the whole ruler over and I just marked a little dot. 
Then with the ruler, I sewed up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And then on this part right here, this is the six inch spiral. Let me see, I'll just pull it up so you can see what I did. And then we'll get on to quilting. Okay, so right here, I just made the very first one go to the edge. And then I just put as many lines as I could reasonably fit, I guess this way, right opposite. And that just divided that triangle into some useful sections. So I plan to do some little tiny, tiny circles right here. Empty, fill, empty. So one of the things that I think it's very useful to do when you're working with quilt and you're trying to create texture is make decisions before you start about what's gonna be filled and what isn't, okay? So little circles right here, we're gonna just be like this. I'm not gonna try to put the super tiniest one in because I think that just looks crunchy, right? So we'll just put some little circles in right here like this, fill in this space. You wanna do it in that figure eight pattern, okay? So each one of these across, I can do these all in a line. Basically, I can start here and just travel on this and then fill in the circles. So this would all be continuous right here. Then if I wanted to, I can sneak up this seam right here and we're gonna do some kind of fill right in there. This will offset these two areas. And then I've got this little breather right here to set these two areas apart. That's why I put this little echo on here so that whatever fill is in here, this will stand separate from this little triangle over here. Okay, so that's where we're gonna start. So it doesn't matter which direction that we go. I'll sew here just because over here we've already put those markings in. All right, here we go. Oh wait, I wanna show you one more thing. Okay, so we, we said that we're using different thread. So right now my machine is set just how it was when I was stitching last night, when I was doing the regular quilting. So in order to make sure that this has got the same correct stitch settings, I think it's worth just taking a little piece of the scrap and putting your threads in and going ahead and testing that. Oh, I can't get that little guy out of there. There we go, okay. So just put my needle down and let's just do a quick test. We don't wanna do all this pretty work and then have that thread just be not working, right? So little loop-de-loops and then some little Vs. That's always my favorite for checking tension. Now these threads are different colored. So they're not gonna show a big deal of difference in terms of your tension, but they still will show a little bit. All right, let's see what we got. So this is the pink on the top, very faint pink. And so I guess what I wanna see is on the back that I don't see any pink, right? So that's the back. And I think it looks fine. I can't really see any pink peeking out of these little dots right here. There's no pink that I see. And then on the top, um, it's really hard. This pink is very close to the white, but I don't see a poor stitch. I think the stitch looks pretty good right there. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and let's start working on that. So that would tell me, you know, that I don't feel like I need to change my tension. I didn't need to make an adjustment. It still looks good. Okay, where are we? Oh, I lost track of where we are. Okay, let's go this way. This way will sew towards you, right? Oh, let's see. Yeah, I'll kind of turn it a little bit so you can see better. One of the things I like about these really lightweight threads is that they do hide very well. So anytime that I need to go over a section that I've already gone over, I can, and I don't have to worry about it. So right now, just sneaking right along the existing line. Okay, when you're doing those little circles, you gotta go a little bit faster, okay? Keep that rhythm going. So I'm looking inside the foot, trying to make sure that the circle kind of comes all the way to touch that seam line. We don't really want a gap in there. So one more. And then when I come down, 
I'm in this bottom seam right now, and I can just scoot along. So remember what we said right here, we don't wanna start right at the very beginning. So I'm gonna just take a few extra stitches down, come down a little bit further, till I feel like I can actually make a circle. With these lightweight threads, I think it's fine to go around more than one time if you want to. Because these threads are so fine that if you put a little bit more thread in there, it's fine. It's just gonna create more texture. It's not gonna create any bulky anything. Okay, so we'll scoot over. Okay, so I'm just gonna adjust my quilt sandwich so that I can make it come with me. Figure eight. Oh, I went outside the lines. Go again. I just gave blood, I'm a little bit woozy. <laughs> just kidding. I did give blood, but that was a good excuse, right? Okay, so just keep on going. It's okay, just keep sewing. Don't worry about following the line too perfect. Just keep sewing. It's all gonna work out. So I can already tell just in those five seconds of sewing I, I'm starting to feel more relaxed. I think when you start, I always feel nervous. I always get really anxious. And then after I've been stitching for like two minutes, I'm like, oh, what's so hard? This is fine. Okay, so let's, let's show you what we got. Maybe we can show you something. Woohoo, love it, right? You can't see right there with all of the markings, but right there you can definitely see. So already we're just starting to change the texture a little bit, just a little bit. This is punched, so this will be open and punched and open. So we're down to the last part here. So let's turn it this way so you can see a little better. And literally I'm just gonna sneak right up to this line and I'm gonna sew that way and sneak up and sew that way. So it's a very easy path for this. It's not that complicated in terms of the, the route to get where you wanna go. And nobody's gonna see any of your travel stitches because it's very, very tiny thread. I can easily get myself right to where I wanna go. So I'm stitching right along the existing stitch. And then let's do this. Let's do like a little parallel loops. So these are about 1 8th of an inch apart. Don't rush it, but try to anticipate your turn a little bit so that you can make a nice smooth transition. So I'm gonna stop right here and just adjust my hands. I don't wanna stop right at that tip on either side because that's where we're trying to make a nice smooth curve. So if I do that, then I won't be able to make a pretty curve. So as it gets smaller, I'm gonna go a little bit faster because I need to be able to turn more quickly. And then right there, I'm just gonna wiggle it. When a kit's so small, at some point, there is no value in trying to make some perfect line or anything else, because you really can't. I can't control it when it's less than 1 8 right? I don't know who, who can, but maybe I'll let them take care of that if that's their, their thing. So up here again. So I'm gonna come all the way up to the top and then start making my transitions right there. I've got my grid glider on, helps everybody move nice and smooth. And I'm vaguely trying to follow the arc. So you see that these are changing their orientation just slightly. They're not straight up and down, they're following the curve. I'm trying to keep them basically parallel or perpendicular to the curve line. So, and then right when you get down to this last part where you can't really get anything, just wiggle. Just get right into your spot right there. You're basically creating the illusion of that. So let's see if we can get any shadow on that. Okay, can you guys see that? Why is my light so bad today? Let's see if I can get some more light in here. 
There, is that better? Can you see that a little better? So that's creating change between this area and that area, and that's something that we want. That's what we're trying to do is let some areas come up and some areas recede. All right, let's just finish that up. Stitch travel is so important. Any time that you can practice that, you should. So we're trying to get this all the way to those arcs because we want to create a fully compressed area. So if I leave a little gap in these little loops at the top and the bottom, then I won't get that compression that I want to have. I'll have like a little peak area on the little stitch edge right here if you have a little bit that sticks out. And what I'll do real quick when we go back, I'll show you a little trick for how you can fix that if that does happen to you. So let's go a little bit faster. Like I said, these are pretty tight. These are about one eighth of an inch apart. And then when it gets really narrow like this, I'm just gonna wiggle it right there, just wiggle a little bit. All right, I'm gonna turn it this way so you can kind of see that texture a little better right there. So what I'm talking about is right there, if I kind of am short of this area, I could come back in with my very fine thread and I can stitch right along the edge, right inside the stitches, just a tiny bit. And again, just go right up the line and then right here, go right inside the stitches right there. What that does is if that area wasn't quite all the way compressed, that's how I can make sure that this whole area now is punched down. Um, when we're done, I'll pull it up and I'll show you this one compared to this one. And that way you can see the difference between those two and I'll actually flip it over on the back too so you can see the backside. So coming up your line right here, right to the top. And I will not lie to you, I have trouble orienting this way because I want to pull and this would be going like this <laughs> if I did it this way. And that's just not comfortable for me. I don't feel like I have as good a control. So I'm going to orient my sandwich just a little bit differently so I have better control, more natural movement. And you should feel like you should be able to do that too. That's your call. Nobody's going to come after you because you turned your quilt a little bit. I'm not going to anyway. Plus, I can see better this way, too. Try to come all the way up to that stitching. Get it all the way compressed. And now just that little wiggle. And then I'll just come back right along here. This right here is really good for developing additional control. And if you had any gaps in here that were a little too wide, you can just travel right down the middle of one of them. And then that way you can just control that gap as well. Okay, so at this point, we're kind of done on this side. So I'll go ahead and I'll just tack it off so we can cut it. scissors and I'll pull it up a little bit so you guys can see a lot closer so this to me is like the fun kind of quilting in the sense that I mean I like I think quilting changes the texture but I like to put more I want to quilt it to death so right there I don't know why I cannot get the light right where I want it seems very dark on my phone So there's the texture that we got, and this is what I'm talking about right there. So like, if you wanna just be micro crazy, you can just come back in with that little thread and you could fill that in. I did a little better job, it's a little smoother on this one, see? 
because otherwise you're going to get this little thing that pops out. So we stitched right there and that punched that down. So this is the first one that we punched down. And then let me show you the other one. Then this is the other one. See the difference? Now you can have this. There's nothing wrong with this. You decide. But see how you get a little bit more of this sticking up right along the edge? And you don't get as much of that with this one. So the definition of punch and not, you know, not fully punched, it's a little different. No, that's really a minute difference. I know that. We all have different perfection quotients. You just pick what yours is. I don't care about quilting some more. I'm good with it. So I'm just going to quilt the tar out of it, right? But it's okay. You choose which one you prefer. Okay? All right. So let's go ahead and let's do that other side. I had a fun idea for this side as well. So I, I think these are nice size to put some little fills in. One of the things that you could do is you could do fill, open, fill, open, or you could put a different fill in each one. Because I want to put something in here, I don't know what yet, I'm gonna go ahead and do fill open, and that way I'll kind of get like the pinstripe effect here, and then I'll put something that's more like flowery and full, not a line of design, but something more like a little flourish in there. And I think that will be soft and straight. So those will work together nicely. And I will probably also put maybe a little echo in here and, and put a fill in this space as well. Something that will be open right here and then a fill and then something in those areas. Okay, so let's go ahead. What's the path? If I start on the bottom or the top, I can do either one. This one we said would be open, so fill, open, fill. This one is gonna be same. I'm not gonna alternate. I'm just gonna, I want this little triangle. He's too small. I don't wanna do anything in there. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> That's honest. So I could start right here and then just travel down. And then when I get to this one, I'll fill this one and leave this open and fill. And then I'm gonna end up up here. So I would have the option of either traveling down this way or just traveling across. I could do either of those. So let's go ahead and we'll just get started. Because this is gonna have a lot of different fills, I'm not gonna to try to put millions of different fills in this. I'm gonna do the same one. And I'm gonna choose the wishbone and here's why I like it. Whenever you have a shape like this, where you have one side is a little wider and then it narrows out. With the wishbone, because of the way it backtracks, I can come in and I can fill this side, fill up something here and come this way. So in a sense, the, the wishbone is good for that backtracking deal, right? So that's why I like it. So we're gonna use that. And then here, as we come in, it's the same thing as we come in. Here I can, if I can't fit another one, I probably can fit another one, but see here how he'll stretch into the gap. So I really like doing the wishbone look when you're working with triangles, especially because they kind of let you fill that last little bit of that corner. Nice. Okay, so we'll get you in a little tighter. Sorry, I gotta click on something real quick so I can say hello to people. All right. Um, so I'm gonna say hi to a couple people. Um, Pocola Chase is one of my local peeps. Hi, Sue Quail. Karen, you're so far away, but I loved seeing you here. So anyway, hope you guys are having fun. I'm bumping my uh, stand right here, so I'll kind of get it set up so it won't be bumping anymore and then we'll kind of start going. All right, so we have got our needle up here at the top, so let's go ahead and get anchored. Right in that seam allowance, that's where I want to put a few of those tacking stitches first before I do anything. So I'm gonna scoot over. So I saw someone had mentioned that small movements are hard for them, and I think that is true. I think something that can help with that a little bit is we do tend to rush that, I think. So I'm gonna 
come this way a little bit and finish out that last one right there. I wanna go in the same direction. So just scoot down right in your seam allowance right here. And then I'll just put this one in. One of the things that this practice would do, this type of one, is you have to go both directions. So this is letting us practice going both ways, which is nice. Same thing, try to make your design come all the way up to your seam allowance and then make your transition. And right there, finish up. And then we'll just sneak right across. So we'll come up a little bit so we can get that backtrack in there. So one of the things with small movements is remember that I'm just using my fingertips. I think it's important not to use like our whole arm. And if I need to move forward, a lot of times what I do is I'm leaning. I'm rocking into the stitch with my body, not using my elbows or my shoulders, but just kind of leaning forward a little bit because I can control that movement maybe a little bit better that way. All right, let's see. Let me scoot in a little bit. So we gotta go up, remember. I almost went over to the next one. <laughs> I, I was going that way. I was about to go that way, could you tell? All right, so let's see what we got. So we gotta go up so we can put the little loop in. So I had put out a post on Facebook about, you know, just thanking people and appreciating the holiday and everything else. And it's been really fun. I've had so many people that have put up pictures of what they've been working on. And I love it. It's so fun to see what everybody's doing. So here, let's just cut across this way since we can get some threads out of the way. This particular area already has some double stitching. So it's a really good place to hide a little bit more. We'll just come down so I remember I used to watch those videos and people would be like stitching right across a line they already stitched I still have anxiety about that <laughs> like, I don't know some people could just do it but you're not going to get any better at it if you don't actually practice it so just bite that bullet and it's okay so let's come down just a little bit so we can start our little loops slow down a little bit so I can get that control as I come down here. I think of this kind of like driving. My daughter is going through driver's training and you know she's having trouble kind of staying in the lane. Well this is kind of like that. Like when we steady our body and our, our shoulders and our arms and we just push in that direction, that's when you start finding it so much easier to actually get the design to behave and do what you want to do. sure if I can fit one more little guy in there so I think I won't I think that would just look like I was trying too hard so right here again I'm just going side to side keeping my elbows steady and just letting my body move totally this way so I can try to keep that line as straight as possible I'll turn it just a little bit so that you can see again this is where I want to come up a little bit so that I can fit my little loop right in that. So I'm gonna come out and backwards and that'll fill up that little gap right there. Okay, 
same thing, let's just move right up to the next one. And we'll come all the way to the top. And then we'll fill in that last little bit. So you can start to see, get, it's very subtle, I think, on the camera, but you can definitely see that the texture is starting to show where this is just pushed down a little bit and you're gonna get a little bit more puff right there. just come up here and tie it off all right little tacking stitches right here do I drop my feed dogs so who asked that so Barbara yes I do I, I get that question a lot um, I think a lot of people are, are questioning that, asking about that. I feel like if I have, especially with this, with these small movements that we're doing, if the feed dogs don't want to go that way, you know, they want to go towards the back, they're pushing the fabric towards the back, they're going to create some resistance. And I, I'm trying to do basically what I can to reduce any re resistance to any direction. So I really feel like if you can... Trust yourself enough to start working without your feed dogs. That is going to position you better to do what you want to do in the future. You're going to have more success if you can start working with that right away. I did, and, you know, I wasn't great at it right away. I mean, I, I got better. I do think that the ruler is a good trainer. So let's kind of put a little shadow on those. Right? Aren't those cute? So now we have, like, little candy cane trees right now with our little pink ribbon. Let me turn it over. It's white on the back. Oh, I got some threads to cut here. But you can definitely see that I can travel all over Kingdom Come with this thread and it doesn't show. And then th what you're getting on the back is texture, like that. You can even see it, I think, even better on the back because it is just a single color. You're really just getting that texture. Looks like I got a thread there to pick out, but isn't that fun? So it really does change this quite a bit. Just that little bit of development really makes a big difference. So my plan is to pretty much go ahead and quilt as much as I can all of these different areas and trying to divide each of these segments so that I can get more detail and more, more visual candy value for it. So let me flip the other side over so that you can see that part as well. And then, I don't know, I think we might do one more thing on this side. Ooh, love it. Wow, you can really see the difference here between where we tacked it and here where we didn't. Right? Big difference, huh? You wouldn't think it would make that much difference, but it definitely does. So let's go ahead and add just one more crazy thing because I want to. Let's put some little curly cues right in here. We'll put a little curl and come back and then we'll sneak up and we'll put a little curl just because we can. The goal with this is just to add some visual detail, but not necessarily add any um, compression per se. We're not going to do something that's dense. We're going to do something that's very lightweight and yet it's going to be kind of a nice way to, to put a little fun in there. So here, let's kind of scoot out just a little bit. And I'm kind of following the line and I'm going to create a little swirl and then I'm going to just kind of come back and not worry about if I'm right on the line. Okay. So can you see it? Right there. Let me see if I can get in a little tighter there so you can see better. How's that? Is that better? Can you guys see that any better? So then I'm going to go ahead. I'll scoot right up again to the same one. I'll just follow this a little bit and we'll just put the last swirl right in there kind of try to center it if I can a little bit and then make like a ribbon so try not to make myself track right back on the same line but doesn't that look cute can you guys see it Woo, just a little bit of fun so again we're still going to have that nice puff right there and then here we'll have to track back on the bottom 
or anywhere. We could track back anywhere we wanted. You know, really, it'll hide just fine. I do want to start from this direction because I do think that's going to make it a little easier to control the design. So not trying to follow the same line, kind of creating a little bit of a ribbon and then come up. And then we'll just keep going. We'll fill those, all of those in. Kind of following the arc right here on the bottom and then dipping a little bit. And when I come back, I'm gonna just come over the top a little bit like a ribbon so that there's a difference in the gap right there. If you wanna just follow the same line back, you can. You can make any adjustments to the design that you want to. Okay, and then we have one more, one more to do, and then we'll be done for today. Oh, I went crazy, I passed it. Let's go back. That's why I like those fine threads, because they let you hide stuff. Follow the arc a little bit, and then dip into your swirl. And then we're done. Okay, let's cut that and we'll pull that up. And we'll cut the other side too. All right, let's get all these threads off of here. We'll cut this one, okay. Let's see, let's get it back out a little bit so we can see a little bit more of it like that. Doesn't that look awesome? It's not super fancy or anything. It's just some little, little bit of change of texture, but makes such a big difference to the finished design. It really just changes everything right there. Instead of it just being that flat look, now we have a lot more drama. So. We're gonna go ahead and keep quilting this. Um, as I said, this is all done with the ruler work kit. So the segment that I'm gonna call this is I'm gonna call it kit and caboodle. Okay, so if you wanna follow along with any of this or do any of these designs, the name of this segment is gonna be called the kit and caboodle free motion segment. And I'll have a playlist. We'll put them out on YouTube and so you can follow along. This is section one. And most of the free motion is going to be done with these lighter weight threads on here. So if we do change it up, I'll definitely put that information out there. But that'll just be an opportunity for us to put tons of different quilting. And you guys have seen a lot of these patterns before. It's not that these patterns are so new and different. It's how we are applying them. So here, kind of seeing how these straight lines are following the arc. So because... You know, if, if we just made everything go this way, the same as parallel to this, it wouldn't really follow the arc. So by following the arc, what we're doing is we're emphasizing this curvature. And then just putting a little detail in here creates even more puff right there. You can really see how this gives that shadow. So those will be the kind of things that we're going to be trying to play with and just create a little bit more definition with everything. And then also making sure we have separations between our units so that this doesn't get lost in whatever's happening over there. Okay. All right, you guys. Well, thank you so much for your time. I have a meeting in 20 minutes, so I'm going to have to say goodbye. But I hope you have a lovely week. And if you're 
going to class in Chattanooga. I cannot wait to see you. I do have um, feather, Fabulous Feathers class coming up on the 8th. And I do have a Decorate Your Christmas Tree um, program that is on December 9th, which is a class you need to sign up and pay for. So if you're interested in that, look for those two links. I have both of them on my page or on So Steady. Have a great day, you guys. Thank you.